this office here, this law office here on East South Cross and Clark Avenue is about three blocks from where I live. So I don't have any traffic jams here. Uh, actually, when I went to the courthouse as commissioner, I had about an eight minute trip to downtown. Um, my mother lives two houses down from me uh, where I grew up. So this is like big time my home. And I have always had a firm belief that uh, neighborhoods should not be thrown away. I've watched a lot of neighbors move out over the years. And it's a free country. You can go wherever you want to go and do whatever you want to do. But as for me, I would like to honor this neighborhood by staying in here and being loyal to it and helping it. And not just helping the neighborhood, but creating perhaps an American phenomenon of what I call neighborhood sustainability, where the neighborhood remains strong across the span of multiple generations and allows people to come in and be pride-filled, you know, in their first year of getting acquainted with the neighborhood as well as in the 50th year of knowing the neighborhood. And so, uh, to me, uh, that's why I have stuck here. I just, and, I, and I feel the same way about other places around the city and the county as, you know, the people that live there, take care of it. Be good to it. Be in tune with your neighbors. We were there for, until Tommy was, uh, he was about 18 months old when we moved to San Antonio. And then my husband <coughs> coached at South, uh, no, East Central. East Central. And uh -huh. then, For one year, and then he went to Harlandale. Harlandale Middle School, mm -hmm. and then the high school. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so, so why did y'all choose this neighborhood to move into? Well, it wasn't too far from the school, and he didn't want to be too close, but he didn't want to be too far, so it was just right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We liked the neighborhood. And it was a kind of an outreach of, uh, of not only St. Gerard Parish, but also of... Uh, the south of that that Denver Heights area you yes. grew up in. Uh -huh. I, I was, uh, I guess, very subliminally uh, influenced by my mother's family, which had uh, uh, played a serious role in the life of the community over the years, the you know century and a half or so. Uh, my father's family, they were uh, sharecroppers in the Dust Bowl of Oklahoma, very poor. My Atkinson grandfather had a um, had a, uh, I believe it was a third grade education, and my Ganslin grandfather, my mother's father, had a degree in, in mining engineer from uh, mining engineering from MIT, and, and so it was like a vast, you know. So during World War II, it's probably happened over and over again in many ways across the globe, but certainly here, uh, they met at, during World War II, Fort Sam, and. Um, uh, this was a country boy meeting city girl. Very diverse uh, family experiences. Uh, they had two things in common. They loved to dance, and they were good people. I, uh, I got involved because I, I had gotten out of high school at St. Gerard High School and um, had government and all that. And then I went over to St. Philip's College and had Frank Madla for a teacher over there, so I thought that was, he was impressive. He was totally excited about changing the world for the better. And uh, we oftentimes discussed and reflected on how poorly treated the South Side had been over, over, the, over the, the years, uh, you know, like a century and a half or two. And how the foundation for the city was along the San Antonio River, the missions, all that from the Alamo to Concepcion to San Jose Mission to San Juan de Capistrano to Espada Mission and how in contrast with that grand and noble history there was the, uh, the reality that the area was not well kept up as it should have been. Now this is a picture of me surveying uh, the condition of a median on the Pecan Valley median when I was 19. So I started out kind of early, and I had a former group called the Youth for Civic Progress. And that was my uh, organization that allowed me to learn how to organize and learn how to um, undertake projects and uh, make a difference. Okay. 
So let's talk about now, why do you believe you're the best candidate to be mayor? Well, I think I know the city and the county, not just its history, that too, which is uh, vastly greater than any of the other candidates. But, uh, I mean, it's not even close. But, um, you know, those other candidates have their own traits and, and strengths too. But, uh, but to know the history of the community is, I think, to know how to best serve it and what it needs. And so, uh, to me, I think that, that's a big deal. I also think my uh, history of having been uh, both in the Texas House of Representatives for two terms, four years, and the Commissioner of Court for 16 years at the local level, the state and local experience, is a powerful combination. And there's, uh, other than Ivy Taylor, who has uh, about six years, I think, experience locally, um, there's nobody even close, and she's not even close. I have 16, she has six. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that is fundamental to knowing what the priorities should be and how we might best proceed in a world of limited resources and unlimited demands. Our resources. Uh, if you're elected mayor, how do you think you'll be able to help relations or keep a good relationship between the city of San Antonio and Bear County? Uh, I would say experience and uh, seniority and uh, having relationships and acquaintanceships. I think those are all uh, positive features of what anybody should have when they enter into uh, a significant public office, or even an insignificant, uh, seemingly entry-level uh, public office, is uh, an acquaintanceship with all of the, the various participants, and I, I have that pretty well in, in hand. Do you think things need to be changed in the relationship between the mayor's office and the county? Is there um, something that you yeah. want to bring that isn't there right now? A absolutely. I think um, if, if you... Uh, Think about it, at any, at any given time, this county of 1.9 or so million people, this city of 1.4 to 1.5 million people, has 100,000 100, people who have either been in our jail or who are on probation, parole, or some kind of criminal justice thing. And the San Antonio Police Department is the primary entity that is checking people into our Bear County Jail. It would seem to me that just as we at the county have done re-entry efforts to try to make sure they don't come back to the jail, that they get a job, that they go to work, that they pay their child support, they pay their taxes, they pay their bills, they support their family, that those who are just entering would be qualified as to how they might also not come back. I would call that pre-entry. County's doing re-entry, the city should be doing pre-entry. And you said before the Bear County Jail is the biggest, was it mental health provider? It is, in it is the number one health, mental health care provider in the county. And uh, is, uh, if not, if, if the mental health dimension of the incarcerated community is not addressed properly, most of the time they're just gonna cycle over and over through our jail. So what do you think is the role of the mayor and the city of San Antonio when it comes to these mental health issues? I think the, the mayor ought to be cognizant, for one, of, of who's in the jail, because the city, in this case, is the one primarily placing these people in the jail, as they are charged to do. But we ought to be aware that there are certain members within that group that we're checking into the jail from the city that if treated properly and appropriately might more readily find themselves not back in our jail. 75% of everybody in our jail has already been there before. When you were commissioner, you, you took a big stance of trying to, you know, prevent recidivism. Um, mm -hmm. How could you do that as mayor? What, what would you do to help keep people from going back into the jail? Well, I think we could initiate a pre-entry program where we try to make sure that that people that don't belong in our jail don't go there in the first place. Now there's some pretty low level stuff that probably 
uh, deserves a fine, uh, deserves some kind of punishment, but whether they deserve a place in our jail is, uh, is another question. With respect to who gets into the jail, uh, there, there are just a whole lot of, um, of people that are treated the same irrespective of their either great or their very minimal problem that caused them to be there. And so if we don't use more discretion in how we treat them, they're just going to cycle through the jail over and over. Every 400 inmates cost the citizens of Bear County eight million dollars and every and we regularly have about almost four thousand so that's about eighty million dollars a year year in and year out with a 75 percent re return rate or recidivism rate. You wanted to run for county judge and you lost in the Democratic primary. Mm -hmm. Now you're running for mayor. Is, is this you know, Van de Pute's been criticized of, you know, San Antonio mayor being a plan B for her. Is mm -hmm. San Antonio mayor a plan B for you as well? Mm -hmm. And a plan B for Mike Villarreal as well. You know, he had a great design to run for senator and then later on for county commissioner. That's why he's in King William and not in the Edison area where he originally began, or the Jefferson area, began his uh, early years. Uh, he. Uh, he was redistricted out of Precinct 2 by the commissioner that he was proposing to, to, to run against. So, I don't think anybody has a lock on, you know, this, you know, falsely pure, you know, that's everything I've ever wanted to be and nothing else. No, I, actually, the common denominator of these offices is you want to serve. You want to serve, you want to make a difference. You want to lift up society. I think it was on election night when I didn't make it for county judge. Uh, a person who said, hey! And I looked around and he said, run for mayor! And I thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of work and no pay, basically. Uh, but I started thinking, you know what? This office won't pay me any money. But frankly, if I was into money, this is the last thing I'd be doing. I would never recommend it. If a person's really wanting to get some money together, do not be a public official. You say, though, that there's not much money in public service, but in your county position, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the commissioners uh, are paid over $100,000. They are. They are. So, I mean... 107 was where it was when I left. I understand it's at 113 now. So why do you say that you know that public service isn't you know at least in your old position you know there wasn't very much money in it? Well, because uh, I, I I think it's true. I I think that uh, I, I have a law license, and uh, that law license would catapult me way beyond this uh, pittance of a pay that I've received. Even if it's uh, great to some, uh, it's not uh, you know everything. Uh, to others, it's it, it's 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 respectable. It's infinitely better than the city council or the mayor to get paid 107 or 113, or as the county judge gets about 125, 135 thousand a year. It's infinitely better, but it's not really necessarily um, what your full potential would would bring in, you know, in the private sector. To run for mayor, it takes a lot of money, and, and Mike Villarreal has, has raised quite a good amount. Leticia yes. has raised a lot too, and she tried to. She's gotten at least 150 of that 300,000 moved over. How how are you doing? How much money have you raised? And do you think how is what challenges do you see when it comes to participating in the mm -hmm. arena? Well, I was told. I was told, and this is the. Uh, the grit and the gumption that has driven me all of my life in whatever in endeavor I have pursued. I was told when I started thinking about the mayorship, the mayoral office, that it takes a million dollars to run for mayor. And uh, my reaction to that is, uh, that is an outrage. That is a threat to the, and that is a clear and present danger to the well-being of our community. For you to have to be uh, so deeply mortgaged to, uh, to, to the, you know, the, the privileged elite 
of the community, they need to be served too, but not exclusively. By the time you get through raising a million dollars, you will serve them quite exclusively. And you may never want to admit it, you may deny it into eternity, but the reality is you are heavily mortgaged to those folks that brought you there. So, you know, a million dollars I think is an outrage. How, how will I handle it? I've probably put, along with Karen, my wife, uh, 120 or so thousand. So you're personally invested uh -huh. deeply? Hugely. Hugely. 120,000 we've raised, about 50 we'll raise another 100 or so. But I'm not going to raise a million dollars. And is, is that going to get your, you got ads going on TV now too, right? And that's, yes. I hear is really expensive to, to very, maintain. Very, do you, very. How important do you think those ads are? They are very important. That's the bar to everyday people serving as mayor, even if they're really well qualified, even if they have great ideas, even if they have a, uh, an impressive uh, a, a work history or an impressive public official history, um, the money becomes the price of admission, uh, big time money, the you, price of admission to higher public offices. So you have two ads, the, the standard ad that talks about who you are, and then you have one that focuses on uh, Senator Vandekey. Why did you feel that this, this other ad was necessary? Because I think the truth has, uh, has not come out yet about the money laundering uh, that's going on, uh, the, 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 lack of, uh, of, uh, the lack of transparency with respect to what the law requires in terms of, uh, uh, of not accepting uh, donations. Uh, there's don there are donations that are way over the $1,000 limit. And, uh, I mean, significantly. Not just, you know, a couple of $5,000 donations. I think uh, $25,000 was one of the figures I saw. But I, I just think um, that if the, if the, if the enforcement mechanism for the obedience of a candidate to the law of limitations on campaign financing cannot address the problem, then maybe taking our message to the people will help address it. A lot of people talk about center city, you know, wanting mm -hmm. to redevelop downtown, mm -hmm. wanting to redevelop uh, near downtown. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we should be focusing so much on downtown San Antonio? Do you think, or do you think there are other areas of town that well, should I, be? Well, I, you know, frankly, it's kind of like, uh, um, you know, picking one area over another. I, I, I think downtown is very special. I think we all treasure downtown, but we cannot let that blind us from the reality that many neighborhoods are highly underserved and um, and, and the city cannot be uh, fixating strictly on a few areas to the derogation of everything else. What do you think the mayor and city council should be focusing their attention on, you know, come July? Basics. Back to basics. How so? Uh, Crime-free, safe and sustainable neighborhoods, uh, road infrastructure including curbs and sidewalks, walkability of our neighborhoods, uh, flood control, we have 2.5 billion plus in unmet flood control needs and expanding local businesses. So would you say that flood control is like one of, you, you mentioned it, but like flood control yeah. is like one of the, because it, it, we're, we're a very floodable city. We are, we are, and uh, part of that, it derives from having 2.5 billion dollars in unmet flood control needs and, uh, and, and deflecting our attention oftentimes on these big important, uh, one might say, vanity projects uh, as opposed to the uh, everyday, uh, not so glamorous, but very critical uh, uh, needs that the city has. So what can you as mayor do about that? Well, you can get on the ball with the flood control efforts. And, uh, you know, the legacy projects, the vanity projects need to take a back seat to the basics 
They don't have to be illuminated. They just need to and be more be, reasonably. Could this uh, be addressed with the bonds? Yeah, could the bonds. be. It could be, yes. Uber and Lyft have left. Do you think that it's worth trying to bring them back? Well, I think that the next time we reset the process for dealing with transportation, uh, they should feel like uh, they're welcome to make a proposal. And I think the council needs to set out the standards by which we will judge cabs as well as the ride-sharing industry and make sure that we uh, have everybody on as level a playing field as we can. And, and I would be very open to that. When it comes to, to companies like Uber and Lyft, is this something that should be decided at the city level with local control, or do you think the state should weigh in and create and draft its own legislation for it? I, I like local control. I, I just think it's more responsive, it's more um, appropriate, more suited to the people than to have somebody in Austin giving you a cookie cutter. I, as a former chairman of the of the um, uh, of the Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO's uh, uh, Pedestrian Mobility uh, Committee, I believe we need to provide as many options as possible, and I think I think the city ought to catalyze a process that brings about uh, robust alternatives to conventional transportation. Julian Castro had the SA 2020 initiative to kind of plan for the vision of 2020, and now Taylor, Ivy Taylor has SA tomorrow. She's supposed to reach out to 2040, but to be more strategic and address some transportation needs. What do you think is the value or the role of those programs if you become mayor? Well, those are visionary projects that, uh, as is said biblically, uh, a nation without vision will perish and so will the community. We have to know where we're going or we'll be lost. And I think that's true of humanity across the globe and across the span of time. We need to have a planning process. And I think when you, what gets measured tends to improve and, and gets done. And so we should say, this is what we'd like to see happen. This is what we think is good. If others come along and say, we don't agree, let them bring something else on. But they'll have to overcome the logic and the thrust of what had been put in place before them. So you do support those initiatives? I support all those initiatives, and I think that it's a healthy thing. So what would a Mayor Atkinson do for, or, or, or do in the negotiations with the police and fire contracts? Well, I'd ask him to come to the table and let's... Uh, Let's work this out and not leave the table until we get it settled. I think uh, I, I think uh, it's calling it's not unlike calling a huddle or calling a, a goals clarification session, whatever you want to call it, and making sure that uh, the, uh, the that the mayor is involved in this. I think that uh, we've had a a power vacuum in the mayor's office for some time. And uh, when you, you know, a uh, power of horrors a vacuum is the old statement. And that means that when people are, uh, are not uh, moving forward and getting things done, that uh, we're, we begin to slide into a malaise. And that's where we are with the fire and police contract. Uh, on that, like, can we talk a little bit about city manager Cheryl mm -hmm. Scully? Mm -hmm. what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on how She's handled um, the police and fire negotiations. You know the lawsuits that have come out. There. What are your what, what are your thoughts on on her handling of this? Of the fire and police negotiations. Mm -hmm. Or well, in, I think I mean in general, I I think uh, I think she's smart. I think she's capable. Uh, I, I've had a pretty good relationship. We hired her husband at the county, and uh, I've had a long-standing good relationship with Mike Scully. But, uh, but I think with respect to the fire and police contract, the, the, uh, the power vacuum was too compelling or tempting, whatever, for her to resist. And she ended up interjecting herself into it in a way that I think an elected official would normally have done. Do you feel mm -hmm. she is overpaid or overcompensated? Mm -hmm. I do. And what, 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 could you as, what would you do as mayor to address that? 
Well, I think you have to uh, do exactly what uh, uh, she's asking the fire and police to do, and that is to uh, come to the table with some concessions. And what if she leaves? We, well, you know, uh, Alex Brasino has the record for the longest standing city manager, 11 years. And after that, Lou Fox is about eight or nine years. I think Cheryl has around 10 years. So really, these city managers are not for life. And uh, it's all uh, out of all due respect, but uh, maybe it's time for us to change gears. Frankly, the uh, million dollar golden parachute is in addition to, to the uh, the bonuses, which, uh, you know, when you get a bonus in the front part of the year for work that's supposed to be accomplished during the year, that's really odd. What, what is the million dollar goal? Yeah, I've that too. Oh, there's a, there's a deal that said that if, uh, if, if she's, if, if there's an inappropriate uh, uh, departure, uh, or let's say, uh, uh, Termination, I guess would be the word, um, by Cheryl Scully from the city, that she would have uh, a million dollars awarded to her for that. If a voter came up to you on the street and asked, why should I vote for you, what would you tell them? Well, I think my track record of solidarity, of courage, of ubiquitousness, which is what Phil Hardberger says I was, ubiquitous, which I didn't understand at the time completely, but I looked it up just to make sure I knew it was okay, because we have been friends for a long time, but I, uh, it means you're everywhere. And to me, whether it's the Tea Party or people uh, upset about the trolley or people upset about any facet of government, usually the presence of the leader can help sell the dust on a lot of that. <laughs> and, and, and I know this has kind of been a, pain, a thorn in your side for a while, mm -hmm. and people can right. bring it up and I have to. Mm -hmm. uh, the situation with the emails in the Third Court of Appeals saying that oh, yeah. you do, that mm -hmm. you should be, you should turn these things over, mm -hmm. and are you, you, you mentioned that you may just finally give up the emails, and people will be greatly disappointed. Oh, they will. Well, can, can you, are you planning on turning over the emails just to get this thorn out of your side? Well, I think, you know, frankly, I don't have time to mess with it. I put a lot of money, uh, almost as much money as I put in this campaign, into the effort to basically preserve my private property, my, my Fourth Amendment privileges rights as an elected official, and, uh, and, I, and I thought, that the, the law did support me at the outset, but the, the um, powers that be changed it in this last session, before the session that's going on right now. And uh, the emails they sought at that time were uh, emails uh, basically uh, between myself and citizens who expect to have a measure of privacy, but because of the Open Records Act, uh, may well not receive any privacy. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like that all the Valero and the AT&T and you name it, employees across the, 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 the spectrum of San Antonio and Bear County who serve on boards and commissions are going to be subjected to this. So they would hope that their conversations on their emails mm -hmm. are not impinging upon and detracting from their own employers. And their employers, I think, would expect that their employees should be given measures of privacy and what they cut up that may impinge upon or detract from their company company's business. So what I believe the um, the the uh, you know the disappointment of you know the emails will be uh, for the Express News and and anybody else who's interested in knowing is that uh, I've had conversations with various citizens, including Terry Hall, who I think was at the eye of the storm uh, on the anti-toll road fight. I've paid a huge price 
when people say, other elected officials, oh, we're against mm -hmm. towards, I have fought against towards. And I don't think so. And that is like, my last I, part of the question is you, the Bear County was ordered to pay the costs that Hearst invested in the lawsuit, mm -hmm. but Nelson Wolf said that you, you would be taking care of that personally. Is that? Yeah, I've you? taken care of about a hundred. Why is that important to you? I've taken care of about $120,000 already. And what's left is not much, but it's important to me to take care of responsibilities and obligations, but it's also important to me for the county to acknowledge some of its own uh, participation. I would not have been sued had I not been a county commissioner. They wouldn't have any reason, they wouldn't waste their time on me. They may not even talk to me, I don't know. <laughs> but they certainly uh, would not have uh, had any interest in this. And so uh, actually uh, every elected official has um, the jeopardy or the prospect for being hauled into court to give up a whole array of, of uh, emails that, that you may think should be private or that those who sent them to you expected that they would be private. You know, such as a person that may say, I, I want to tell you that my son has uh, uh, been dealing in drugs and I think he's about ready to be busted. Can you please tell me who, as an attorney, I might seek advice and counsel from? And uh, maybe all, that's all prospective talk about, you know, a son that may or may not be involved in drugs. But, you know, you, you, you can see the danger that lurks there. And uh, even for an elected official or a, a board and commission member, to be subjected to this, I think, uh, should suggest caution. And I think the county has an interest in every elected officials, and certainly the county officials, protection of certain matters that, uh, that should be remain uh, private. But um, I'm looking forward to resolving it and hope that, that we can move on. I appreciate that.